Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another airbrushing for the beginner. Now this one is on surfaces you can paint on. I know exactly what you're going through when you start out. You're itching to start painting automotive, leather jackets, trainers, t-shirts. You just get that bug with the minute you get the airbrush in your hand and you're itching to get on all these different materials. But it is knowing the correct way of applying paint to these materials. So stick around and I'll talk you through because I've used all these surfaces along my career and I've gone through the trials and errors of learning these surfaces. So I'll give you a little bit of knowledge on what to do, what to apply and how to do it. So the first thing that you usually start off on is paper. Now, as I say, when you're a beginner, start off <clears throat> on cheap paper because it, it's nice and cheap. You can blast your paint on it. And when you're doing, you practice pieces, you can just throw that paper away. And then when you start to advance and get better and you're nailing your artwork and you're getting some really nice artwork down, start moving on to quality paper. I've got two pads here that I've used and we've got some pictures here that I've done on the channel. These are on the channel guys on what I've painted. Um, we've got one on this one here. So this one's sort of a, a photorealistic piece of a clown face. Now that one was done on this one here. Now this is a acrylic pad. It's a 300 gram. And I picked this up on trial to try it for the channel on some pieces of artwork. Now I find this pad, it's got a texture to it, sort of like a canvas texture, but it's quite shiny surface. It's a hard surface, so it, it was okay for erasing. You could scratch back but lightly so you could manipulate the paint a bit on this and i did some scratch back techniques and eraser techniques on this so it's not a bad paper to work on now this one i got from hobbycraft i think these ones are about 18 to 20 pound for a pack but it's a nice paper to work on with the acrylics that i used i think this one would work nice with your Createx illustration colours would work nice on this if you use Createx, it'd be a nice one to work on. So that's that one. And then we've got this one here, which is another pad. Same place, Hobbycraft, this is a mixed media, and this one is more like your basic, a cheaper. It will take inks, pens, pencil, uh, acrylics. And I did this piece on this one which was in one of the beginner's classes, a grayscale portrait sort of with the faces in the mirror on the hand. And I find this one really nice to work on. Uh, you can't do your scratch back techniques or eraser techniques on it, but it's a nice surface to work on because the paint just sits really nice on it, dries down nice, and it absorbs on this paper quite well. So it's a nice, surface as i say to work on this one these pads are coming in at about 15 16 pounds but you do get quite a lot of paper in these packs so that's a couple of surfaces that i use that i go to for my sort of portraits on the channel i'll use these two now once i've painted this one you'll tend to find on a shiny surface if you if you're using acrylics and you're going heavy on, on your paint like this, where you drop your blacks in on this one and you've got your lighter tones, you can tend to find when you hold it up to the light, it glosses up on your blacks where it's dark and you're loading the paint up. And then when you go down to your softer areas, it can look quite matte where you've gone lighter with the airbrush. Now, framing a picture like that, when you frame it and light hits it, then glossy parts stand out and the matte parts sit down sort of matte and it looks a bit wishy-washy when you've got it up against the light on a wall. I tend to find if you use a sealer, I've got a matte varnish here, sprayed over the top in a matte varnish and then it knocks all your glossy parts back and makes it one sheet of matte and I find a matte picture framed on a wall looks a lot better with light hitting it than a glossy picture where the light's bouncing off of it. So that's a good one to know guys, is just do your, you can seal your pictures down. If it looks a bit too over glossy in places when you've painted it, you can get sealers, satins, gloss, and mats. 
I'll put a link in the description to this one. It's a really good one. You can spray this for a 0.5 airbrush, not a problem. And it goes down on this paper, seals it down really, really well. So that's a little bit on paper. If you're going down to plastics and you're thinking of going like doing the RC bodies and things like that, my experience with plastics, you've got to go down with a plastic primer first. That's what I've always done on sort of automotive plastic plastics like ABS plastics, like wind mirrors, grills, anything sort of plastic on a car, you can go down with plastic primers. Now I've got one there which is a maple one, which is aerosol can. That one works really well. And I've also got Standox, which I always use at the minute, is Standox plastic primer. It's a brilliant primer guys it works really well that one you can use in the airbrush or spray gun and that one straight out of a can so you put your plastic primer down first key your surface up put your plastic primer down and then work your base colors off that and then go up to your airbrushing colors and then you'd eventually go like clear coats so anything plastic go in with a plastic primer don't just paint straight down to the surface because your acrylics won't adhere as good to plastics that way go down with the primer first and you know you're good to go now if you're going metals like anything like car or you're going aluminium raw aluminium and raw metals you need primers like etch primers an etch primer you can get in a like a litre form where you mix it and you can spray in big guns or you can get etch primer in cans like this so you drop an etch primer down or an epoxy primer down and then you go off them primers with your base coats, other primers and things like that and then you can work up to your airbrush colours again that way. When it comes to aluminium and you want to work on, start working on some smooth surfaces, you can get what is called aluminium signboard. Now I've got a piece here that I've done a piece of artwork on, we've got the grayscale portrait and then I've dropped all the metal flake low rider style on there and this is clear coated. Now signboard is brilliant to work on. It's classed as signboard, it's also called dye bond, it's known as, and it is an aluminium sheet. You've got plastic, dense plastic in the middle, and then it's sandwiched front and back with a thin layer of aluminium. And then the aluminium is powder coated white, both sides, so you get a matte side and you get a gloss side. And as I say, it's great to work on. You can cut it with a scalpel, a few passes with a scalpel, put it to the end of your table and you can snap it with a few passes with a scalpel. To key that surface up, because it's already powder coated, you can go in with a grey scotch brite, scuff the powder coat back, clean it down and you're good to go straight away as I did on that airbrushing with your acrylics. Or you can go in with like a sanding disc, I'd say minimum 500 up to 1000. Scuff the surface back and you're good to go. It's a great one to practice on guys and you can get some really nice finishes. And that's if you're going in to start in doing your own clear coating and things like that. You can get a piece on a nice piece of aluminium, do all your artwork and you can clear coat it and that's good for outside because that's basically working like on a car. You can work the same sort of ways you would on a car panel, car hood, a motorbike tank. You're going the same sort of method with a piece of aluminium. So that's my little update on surfaces for you. There's t-shirts, there's trainers. I've tried both. There's timber, I've tried that. If you're going down the t-shirt route, I would recommend you buy yourself a heat press. Don't go the iron route. A lot of people go cheap when they go t-shirts and they get an iron to seal their paint down. Now, irons are all well and good, but as you know, with an iron, you can do a pass along here like that. And by the time you've gone from there to there to there, that temperature has dropped dramatically over that surface. It doesn't stay consistent, but with a heat press, it's basically a big plate that lifts up like that. You put your whole t-shirt down and then press and clamp and it's got a full heated element plate that gives you a consistent heat across the board. It just seals down the paint a lot better. 
That's what I've learned from in the past. They work better, guys. So if you're going t-shirt route, go for the right paints. I'll leave a link in the description where you can get and source paints for fabrics and things like that. So t-shirts, heat press. If you're going trainers and things like that, where you get the Vans trainers and you want to do some airbrush on trainers, you can get the same paints that you'd use for your t-shirts, but then you can get sealers, which is similar to sort of this. It wouldn't be this one, but you'd get like a clear sealer. And then you can seal down your paint that way on the trainer, so it's more durable and you can flex it and you don't, you won't wash away your paint on trainers being out in the rain, walking around, it won't sort of run, it'll seal it down like a waterproofing. So that's my little info on surfaces, guys. I hope it's helped. I, like I say, I've tried a lot along the way. I stick to this sort of stuff, aluminium, papers, automotive, timber, um, and that's, the, that's sort of the niches I go down, but you can go around and do all the other things, guys, and just enjoy it, that's what it's about. That's what I've done along the years, just enjoyed all these different surfaces, and now I've found the ones that I really like working on. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget, if you're new to this channel, click that subscribe, press that notification, and I will see you in the next one, guys. Cheers.